The clutch assembly is securely attached to the flywheel, which is bolted to the engine. It's always spinning if the car is running. The components inside this assembly allow power flow to be disconnected from the transmission input shaft. Note that the transmission input shaft does not itself connect to the engine crankshaft or flywheel. Connection to engine power is accomplished with a sliding friction disc, sometimes called a clutch plate, sandwiched between the flywheel surface and a movable pressure disc. The clutch plate assembly is splined to the transmission input shaft, but can slide back and forth. The pressure disc gradually squeezes everything together as the driver releases the clutch pedal for a smooth connection to engine power. To further ensure smooth power delivery, the clutch plate has a built-in damping system. The friction plate floats on the transmission input shaft. Power flows from the disc through damping springs which push against a rotating top plate whose center is splined to the transmission input shaft. The springs continuously absorb vibrations or other potentially harmful anomalies in the flow of power. Now let's look at how the pressure plate moves. The pressure plate is connected to a special diaphragm spring. This strong spring is what naturally presses the pressure plate to the flywheel. The outer cover has hooks that hold the diaphragm spring securely in place and act as a fulcrum. There are also supporting leaf springs attached to the pressure plate and cover. The clutch fork sits at the center of the diaphragm spring. As the clutch fork pivots, it presses against a release or throwout bearing, depressing the diaphragm spring's inner prongs, which in turn lifts its outer edge and the connected pressure plate. Let's see that movement a few more times. The clutch fork acts as a lever with a fulcrum point on the transmission case interior surface. It's driven by a hydraulic actuator whose lines lead back to the clutch pedal with its own hydraulic actuator and fluid reservoir. 